Hey, this is CJ Maurer with The Gist, a certified HubSpot Solutions Partner Agency. Welcome back to another one of our strategic HubSpot tutorials. Today, we're gonna to be diving into one of the very important, in my opinion, product updates from 2025 Inbound. At the time of this recording, this product update was announced just a handful of days ago and one of a number of videos that we're gonna be making to explain all of the different HubSpot updates that were just announced and how we can apply them to use HubSpot better and, and use HubSpot as a tool to help our businesses grow better. Okay, today we're talking about the new projects object. Projects object. This is a brand new default object and is on the heels of a number of new default objects that HubSpot has now included into the CRM. Uh, so if you're familiar with HubSpot, you know that contacts, companies, deals, and tickets have always kind of been the, the major four default objects. And then, yes, of course, things like products and quotes and, and tasks, right, and so on and so forth are, are also kind of considered other objects, leads more recently, right? But they're more specialized objects that don't fully function the exact same way as a traditional default HubSpot object has done. We also know that traditionally you could be an enterprise subscriber and if you have any hub at the enterprise subscription at the enterprise level, then you can create custom objects. We have created custom objects in our CRM. We have created custom objects in a lot of our client CRM. But what HubSpot is doing now is building a lot of default objects that won't show up as soon as you activate the CRM, but will if you activate them in your object library. So you can use different objects to store data on different parts of your business in different and certainly better ways. So look right here, I am in the data model tool. This is another great tool that uh, is in the data management section of HubSpot. By the way, I don't know if you're noticing this, but the HubSpot interface looks a little different. If you remember, the main toolbar and the sidebar were like kind of a dark blue. If you go to your Hub, the name of your HubSpot account in the top right and under theme, switch to the new theme, you will be able to convert to this new view. It is largely the same. And if you're a creature like ha of habit like me, you probably would initially be resistant to this. But let me tell you, just do it. The sooner you get used to it, the better, because how they built it, it is making the CRM better for everyone. So I highly recommend doing that. Okay, so I'm in the data model. And once again, this is a video for a different day, but the data model is a great tool to see how all of your objects relate to one another, right? So if I hover over to companies right now, I can see that companies can associate with contacts. We're a partner, so they can also associate with partner clients as well as deals, tickets, services, and projects. So this is a brand new new one. You can see we only have one record created. So I'm actually in my own real portal right now, not a demo portal to show you this. In order to activate this, you will have to go into settings and under data management, select object library. That will take you here. This is where you can see, all right, starting with all of the traditional ones, contacts, companies, deals, and tickets, right? These are the new free default objects that HubSpot has provided. So you have appointments, courses, listings, right? And if you hover over them, right, you can get some details, right? Like a listing is information about a particular property or unit being bought, sold, or rented. So this is clearly something that HubSpot has created to help people in real estate, right? Courses are for people who want to use HubSpot to manage education, whether that is traditional education or e-commerce, right? Opening up a lot of opportunities for different types of businesses. Since we are a service business, we get paid to conduct projects and ongoing managed services to implement HubSpot for clients. We actually activated the service object and now every time a deal closes, closed one, we have workflows that automatically create a service record from the deal and put it in one of our two pipelines, which is how we categorize our services, pull in all the data from the deal and then put it in the service. And then we track the, the life cycle of that service from start to finish, whether it's a two or three month project or a 12 month retainer. So we actually are using this. So now all you literally need to do is go and check the box and create the object, right? If I were to check listings, you would just click confirm and boom. And now you have listings in your CRM, which means when you hover over CRM, 
and you go down here, they will show up as one of the objects in your CRM. You can see this is still in beta, but now I'm gonna click into my projects. And this is incredible for a variety of reasons because we can talk about all the new views that are available right now, but you can see this is just a standard, I created a test project, HubSpot implementation, ABC demo company, and it's just like a normal record, which means what? We can customize the record, we can create custom project properties, we can associate it with different objects, we can trigger workflows from projects. So if a project reaches a new status in a pipeline, yes, you can create your own project pipelines, then you can trigger automations. And the big thing, and you may be wondering, well, how is this different from like a ticket, right? Because transparently, our agency typically, for clients who want to track projects and don't have an enterprise subscription, we just create a custom ticket pipeline. So a common use case would be, you want to track your client onboarding, right? So we would create an onboarding ticket pipeline, map out the stages, and then have uh, workflows automatically create a ticket in the onboarding pipeline when a deal is closed one. So if you're thinking, well, great, but I already have this with tickets, how is this any different? Well, the answer is, is that the project pipeline is specifically much more connected with tasks. Inside your projects, you can create tasks. I'll say task one. And obviously you can do this through workflows as well. I'm gonna do task two. We'll make this due in a week, right? And then, right, you can, you can see a much greater view of all of the different, you know, all of the different tasks that are related to your project. What's also cool is you can view things in Gantt view, right? So now I can see here are my tasks. You can see the start and end dates. And now this really starts to become like a project management tool. Now, truthfully, we have always informed new potential HubSpot users to not think of HubSpot like a traditional project management tool, like a Monday, a Trello, a Asana, or a ClickUp, right? What I have to say though is, although a traditional project management tool like ClickUp or Monday is obviously gonna be much more robust, HubSpot is certainly moving in the direction where you can start to use it to track projects. And I'm going to tell you, in the near future, we will start to use this for ourselves and recommend this for our clients. Honestly, the next client that we sign that wants to use HubSpot to track their onboarding process, there's a really good chance we're gonna build this in the projects object now instead of a ticket pipeline. Project object, super exciting, has nothing to do with AI, right? Even though most of the you know product updates are, are AI themed, but for, for all of you like old school CRM traditionalists out there, you'll probably love this just as much as me. That is HubSpot projects. Hope you found this useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to our channel. It helps more people reach it. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to The Spotlight. It is our weekly email of a strategic HubSpot use case delivered to your inbox every Monday morning at 10 a.m. your local time. I'm CJ. Once again, thanks for watching.